Hello everyone, welcome back to Med Made Easy. This is the channel that makes medical concepts easier to learn and remember. Today we have a very popular topic about ADHD, but specifically ADHD in adults. Now ADHD is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. We commonly hear about this diagnosis in children, but what about adults? Many times with adults, we joke about it. We jokingly label individuals who are either inattentive or fidgety or those who can't sit still or focus for a very long time. We label them as, oh, you have ADHD. And many times we even joke about it in ourselves. But ADHD is often under-recognized and underdiagnosed in adults. And there's a lot of lack of awareness about this. ADHD went unrecognized and even given other labels for years. ADHD is considered a relatively newly defined diagnosis. The diagnosis was recognized by, by the American Psychiatric Association in the third edition of the DSM, which was published in the 1980s. And it was actually first called ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder. Later, it was renamed the ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, but received a ton of attention until years later, specifically in the 1990s after the rise in this diagnosis. Now, some of the rise of this the attention to the diagnosis, it came with increased education and awareness from both clinicians and parents. An important part of the diagnostic criteria for adults is to determine if the patient had certain symptoms present as a child, specifically symptoms that start before the age of 12. I do want to note that the symptoms can change over time, and often they do. And adults with ADHD may display their ADHD in different ways than maybe when they were in a, as a child. Another important diagnostic criteria is the level of severity of the impact on daily functioning. This is super important. How significant are the ADHD symptoms negatively impacting the individual's life? It's not uncommon for these individuals to lose their job or they can't get assignments done, they're late paying bills, poor grades, missed appointments, and even issues with relationships. Some people may even consider these individuals lazy, irresponsible, and careless. There are three groups of symptoms involved in ADHD. These groups of symptoms include hyperactivity, impulsivity, and inattention. Hyperactivity and impulsivity are often lumped together, and then inattention is on its own. An individual may have symptoms from each of these three different areas. However, one type may be more predominant than the other. There's three basic presentations or subtypes of the ADHD. There is the combo presentation of all three. There's the predominant inattentive. And then there's a predominant hyperactive impulsive. For a diagnosis of ADHD in adults, the individual will have a consistent pattern of some of the following symptoms that are negatively impacting their life. More specifically, adult individuals who are 17 years and older will have at least five symptoms present for at least six months. Let's get into the categories and let's get into the symptoms. Let's first start with the hyperactivity and impulsivity symptoms. Let's go over these here. They may fidget. These individuals may tap their feet or their hands, almost like they can't sit still. They often appear restless and they squirm. They may leave their seat when they're not supposed to be. And they may be in the middle of a meeting and just repeatedly get up out of their, their chair. You almost may think that they have bladder or GI issues. For kids, and we're not specifically talking about kids today, but typically for kids under the um, under this category, we think of when kids are running around climbing on things when it's not appropriate. But for adults, similarly, it's when they're restless and they can't sit down for long periods of time. They may talk a lot. You just can't get them to stop talking. They're always on the go. They may be like a motor that just never stops running. They cannot play quietly. It's almost like that person in the movie who can't stop talking during the movie. They tend to blurt out answers before the question is even finished. We all know someone like this. You might have a coworker in a meeting who does this, almost like they can't hold it in. Or you might have been in class when someone does this and you might get quite annoyed by it. They have problems waiting their turn. They often interrupt others when an individual is talking. This often comes off as very rude and inconsiderate. Moving on to the next group of symptoms, inattention symptoms. They don't pay attention to details. They make careless mistakes that may seem like they're not even thinking. It's like, what were you thinking? 
This often makes them appear careless and even irresponsible. They have a difficult time holding attention to whatever they're doing. They just can't focus on that thing. These individuals sometimes can seem like they're not listening at all. A lot of times they have poor eye contact when you're in conversation with them. They, be looking, they may be looking at something else. They may even stop the conversation and, and go talk to someone else or go do something else. They have a difficult time following through on the tasks that they've been assigned. They get sidetracked easily. They get easily distracted. This can be when they're trying to get homework done or work tasks done and they just get up and do something else in the house because they just, they just can't focus on that project at all in one sitting. You may often see that these individuals have a million unfinished little projects. That's pretty common with people who have ADHD. They have issues completing a project. They just can't seem to get the job done and they don't follow through. They often struggle with organization. They just can't seem to get it together. They avoid anything that requires a lot of mental effort over a long period of time. A big thing is, is sometimes they lose things. They might even be labeled as forgetful. They might be the one who you signed the potato salad for a potluck and they completely forget to bring anything at all. They might be the one who misses important appointments that you'd think, how could someone miss this? Or missing bills that are due and things like that. Now these are the symptoms basically. And as I said, these individuals have at least five or more of these symptoms. Prior to being diagnosed with ADHD, the individual will have a comprehensive evaluation. This is an extremely important part in correctly identifying ADHD. It may include screening tools, childhood history, family history, school performance, labs, and other tests, depending on the clinician. It's important to realize that other conditions may have to be ruled out first before determining that it truly is ADHD. If you are concerned that you have ADHD as an adult, Talk with your primary care provider.